Uh, joining us live on the phone from French Racing News right. is Sally Ann Grassic. Good morning. Morning, how are you? Yeah, ab ab absolutely fine. How is it um, over there? Are, are you at the track in, in Paris today, Sally? Yeah, I just arrived to the track um, about half an hour ago. I actually just arrived with uh, Harry Bentley and, and Gary Carroll, who are the only two foreign jockeys, who are, are English or Irish-based jockeys, who are riding here today. Um, the, the weather is fine. It's a bit cloudy at the moment. Uh, there's rain forecast later on in the afternoon, but the, the ground is good at the moment, and it's, it's forecast to be dry tomorrow. Yeah, some of the, some of the panellists think they're uh, weather reporters over here as well, Sally, and they're saying, I told you so. I, I knew there'd be a touch of rain. But we always see a reported ground over in France, and it will say good, and then we'll watch the race, and it will still be chucking up, softer side of good. Is it likely to still be on the soft side, taking in, you know, regardless of the fact that there's been, you know, fair weather? I haven't been out to, to walk the track yet. I know a few of the jockeys were just heading out when, when I was coming in there. Um, I would definitely, I've been saying all week, I was over filming with some of the, the English trainers in the past week, and I've been telling them all, as long as it's as good, it's always going to be a little bit easier on the softer side of good. It, it's never going to be firm ground in France. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the art. Let's get stuck into the big race of the day. And now, I'd, I mean, really love your view on, on obviously the French runners as we try and pick our way through the ones that we know the form about, the, the likes of Kingston Hill, Tegruda and Tapestry. Where would you start with the leading French, tra uh, re leading French chant? Is it Trev? Um, no, actually, it, it's not any more so much. Um, the, the leading French ones, we have to, you can't ignore Trev. Um, she's had an awful lot of foot problems in the past year. Um, I know the, the guys in, in the yard in Cricket Heads ha have told me that they've had a lot of problems getting her shoes right for her not to, to suffer anymore. Cricket Heads said this week to um, Echidia when she was interviewed that Trev has had to adapt and live with the problem. Um, which is something that worries me. She hasn't said that the problem has been cured and that it's been fixed. She said that Trev has adapted to it and that she's now at 95.5% to what she was last year. That, that worries me a little bit that she's had to adapt herself. She doesn't seem to have the turn of foot that she used to have um, since she's had those foot problems. The, the French ones that we're all talking about over here are especially Ecto, and Avenir Sertan, um, Greg Benoit had the very difficult choice of, of choosing between those two rides in the race. Uh, he's gone with Ecto because he said that Ecto was a more complicated ride, uh, would be more difficult to change a jockey last minute just for the big day. And it was also the horse that gave him his first Group 1 win last and year, so he decided it would be easier to replace a jockey on Avenir Sertan. Than and Sally Ann, the, the gallop is something that's really sort of every, everything's blown up over here. In the UK, uh, Ectox Gallop was that quite impressive? Have you managed to see the footage of that? Yeah, we, Akidia went and filmed that this week, so I've, I've seen the footage of that. They were very pleased. It was the first time he'd been on turf since he won the the Premier, so that was his first time going back on the turf. He was very impressive in that. They didn't ask him to do a whole lot, but he's a big, top-heavy horse. He's really strong and, and quite heavy. I would think that a little bit of rain this afternoon would help him because I can't think he's going to handle very firm ground. OK, Avenir Setan, we, we've touched on it. There, there's a, a slight question mark, or at least uh, so we believe, in, in whether she's going to stay. Um, now, I've seen on the dam side Mark of Esteem, which is, is of course, uh, the breeding pattern which bred our mask Marvel, St. Ledger winner of two years ago. Surely Avenir Setan on, on the breeding front will stay? I think so, and she's, she's by La Harve, you know, I, I, I think that she, she should stay. Um, she hasn't run over this trip, that's where the question mark is. Um, Jean-Claude Rouget made the decision to run her in a Group 3 in Deauville in, the, in August and skip the trial races with her because he trains down in Po, which would be a 12-hour horse box drive. He preferred to bring her to Deauville, stay there for three weeks during the month of August, run her and then bring her back to Poe to, to prepare for the, the arc. He didn't want to be driving her up and back and taking a lot out of her in, in three weeks before the arc. So that's why she didn't run the, the trial races. Christophe Lemaire has been really bullish and really confident about her since he's picked up the ride um, after Gregory Benoit made his choice. I think she, you know, I think the only question mark is, is the distance for her. But uh, Jean-Claude Rougier, I spoke to him last night, uh, I saw him last night and he said, if she doesn't stay, it's not the end of the world. She most likely, it's almost 100% that she'll stay in training next year. So he said, if she doesn't stay, we'll take her back home and she'll run over you know, shorter distances next year. He said, but we have to try. Okay, and, and the last 
two uh, French runners, not the, obviously the last two French on the cards, but the last two maybe you can give us a brief on a, a bigger price, uh, yet represented in, in formidable silks would be Flintshire as well as Dolnia. Uh, how would you split those two? Yeah, Flintshire is, he's a horse that's a bit difficult to, to kind of judge. He's He's had put up some good performances and, and some not great ones. He was second to Sirius' egg, obviously, in Epsom. I know that um, Andre Farr wasn't too positive about that run um, afterwards. The horse, he would like the ground. That is a definite positive for him. He likes fast ground. The Grand Prix de saint Louis you can completely ignore because the ground was bottomless and he hated it. But um, you have to take into account he was second to Sirius de Zeg that day, but Sirius de Zeg pulled up lame. So, so that you know can't be a, a huge positive. But he's kind of a bill of sales for Andre Fab, who's the winning most trainer in this race. He, you can never ignore him. Uh, I think that's why, if he wasn't trained by Andre Fab, I don't think he would be the price he is um, for this race. And then uh, Don Mio, um, obviously for for the Aggie Can. There's been a lot of us talk about her as well. She benefits from the Sunnies allowance, which is a huge benefit. And with Christoph Dumian on, on her back, you always know, Yeah, no, and, and obviously another reason you can't ignore Andre Farr, because he's got three runners in our group one over here today, sally Ann. Um, let's get a... I don't know whether you've picked a selection in this race or whether we've already talked about it. If I if I were to, to make you have a punt in the race, I don't know whether you're a punter, but where, where would you go or where would you advise people to go? Um, personally, speaking with my heart, Al Kazim is a horse I loved last year, and I saw he was at sixty-six to one yesterday. I thought that was a little bit ridiculous for him, though. Um, though it, it, I think he's not the same horse that he was before. Uh, Kingston Hill, I really like, but of course his price is drifting since he got such a bad draw. That's a, a real negative point for him. It, it's going to be really tough from from the draw he's at. Uh, I think it's going to be a three-year-old filly this year. Cool. I was going to say, if Al Kazim wins, I don't know what I'll do, but three-year-old fillies are usually the way to go in this race. Uh, Avenir Satan, very interesting thoughts on that. If we can just maybe get a touch on, I don't know whether you've looked and there's a, an interesting selection in one of the other two races, whether it comes in the Abbe uh, or another race on what is, a, I think, a six or seven Group 1 card at Longchamp on the Sunday. Anywhere, any, anything else to look out for? Yeah, we have a total of eight Group 1s because we have the, the, the Arab uh, most group expensive one. Arab race as well. So, um... Oh, the the other ones to look out for. Um, I like Jack Naylor, who I saw uh, win in uh, the Curra the other day for Jesse Harrington. Um, I heard what you said about the Abbe. I think that uh, I agree. I think the Abbe is a race to leave alone in in betting terms. You know, any one of five or six could could end up winning because of um, because of traffic problems. It, it it's all the way it, the luck in running in that race. Um, an interesting thing: the Wow Signal is a horse I loved when he won in Deauville. It was very impressive. In that race, there's been two horses supplemented in the Jean-Luc Lagardère, um, Citroën Spirit and Burn Sugar, and both of them go through the ring this evening at the Arc Sale here um, just beside the track. So the two of them could be representing new owners tomorrow when they run. So it will be interesting to see exactly what price they go for to their new owners, sally Ann. I'm going to have to let you go now. Thanks for joining us. We'll obviously keep an eye on those three-year-old fillies. Should one win or should al Kazim win, I know who to call if I need a, I need a pint. Yeah, definitely. If Alcazim wins, I don't think you'll see. I told James Doyle I was going to I was going to have a bet on it. I don't think you'll see myself or James Doyle for a long time if Alcazim wins. Okay, lovely. <laughs> um, well, all the best anyway. Enjoy your racing today and tomorrow in Paris. Okay, thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.